So in the last week alone, four Republican congressmen from Texas announced plans to retire instead of running for re-election in 2020. Of course, the Lone Star State is traditionally red, but Texas trended a little purple when then Congressman Beto O'Rourke challenged Ted Cruz for his Senate seat. Even though O'Rourke lost, many believe that he changed the game. It's worth noting in 2018, six Texas Republicans have won by margins of less than 10 percentage points. Hmm. Joining us to discuss the GOP plans to maintain its hold on Texas in 2020 and with reaction to the announced retirements is the chairman of the Harris County Republican Party, Paul Simpson. He joins us now via Skype. Paul, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Paul, there's a big narrative here in Washington, D.C. They say, wow, these Texas uh, retirements spell doom for the GOP in the 2020 election in Texas. Suburban voters are finally going to drag Texas blue. Your response, sir? Well, I know everybody wants to build that narrative, but it, it's not true when you look at the ind individual retirements. You know, two of those retirements were uh, members of Congress who had been there for decades, uh -huh. uh, 68, 71 years old, uh, I think, uh, Congressman Marchand had been in office for four decades, so it's time they know to move on. Uh, Congressman Olson has had some health issues and family matters, so it makes sense for him to retire. Uh, and Congressman Hurd, you know, maybe doesn't want to be in the minority anymore, and that's, I think, a, a factor. Uh, if you be in the majority, you go to the, to the minority, and particularly with the term limits that Republicans have on, on committee chairmanships. Uh, mm -hmm. has had to do. So uh, no, Congressman Conaway, specifically, in a very safe district, said that's why he was stepping down. He didn't want to continue not in leadership. So sure. it's a normal turnover, but I think it's really healthy for us. Mm -hmm. We have folks like, I, I live in Dan Crenshaw's district, uh, who's our you know, rising star for us. And he's a, came out of nowhere two years ago, uh, three years ago, and, and is now a star in the Republican Party. So he's young, fresh uh, member of Congress who came in because one of our, uh, our stalwarts had retired. So it's a good thing for us to bring fresh blood in. All. That's a yeah. good point. Well, a lot of, I mean, a lot of people paid attention to Congressman Hurd's announcement in particular because he w won such a narrow race in a really tough district um, this last time around, and because he's the only remaining African American member of the Republican caucus in the House. Um, we had one of your counterparts on the Democratic side from Texas. I think the executive director is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, on earlier in the show, uh, earlier in the week, to talk about why he thought Texas is in fact in play. Let me play the sound and then get your response. From 2014 to 2018, 1.8 million new Texans were added to the voter registration rolls. The majority <laughs> people of color, the majority <laughs> women. And to put that number into perspective, that's the like the entire voting age population of New Mexico. And when you ask Texans if they would vote for Donald Trump or someone else, someone else currently wins. So what do you make what's, of that, sir? What's your response to that, sir? Well, number one, they, they we're out raising, uh, in fact, registering uh, millions of voters right now. It's a huge effort across the state on the Republican side to register new voters. And I think it's a mistake. The Democrats have always assumed that demographics is their destiny. Uh, we're doing a lot on the ground here and across the state to make sure that isn't the case. I don't think you can treat the Hispanic voters as, as a block, as the Democrats want to do, and take them for granted. So we're, we're, we're fighting that at every level. I, I think his... Uh, I know he can appreciate his uh, attempt at confidence, uh, but I, I think Texas stays red this time. In, ter in terms of Hispanic voters, though, I mean, does the president's rhetoric hurt you there? Uh, not to those who are voting. Uh, I think hmm. the problem is it, there's a, a lot of distortion in the president's rhetoric, and I'm, you know, we can go on to that. That'll take us another hour to debate. But I think <laughs> he, he's made a huge impact on Texas. It's been very positive impact on Texas at all levels. In the meantime, the Democrats are going extreme left. And that's not going to play well in, in, in Texas or in Houston, even, where, you know, we're the energy of the world. We have the largest medical center in the world. So and things like the Green New Deal and this, uh, this, the socialism that they're pushing and the Medicare for all, which would wreck our, all of which would wreck our economy, um, be terrible for Houston. Meantime, the jobs and jobs and jobs are growing for all levels of the economy and all demographics. Paul, so. another thing I want to get your reaction to is that Congressman Joaquin Castro released a list of donors who maxed out to Trump in San Antonio, a city which he represents. Can, I mean, obviously, I would like your reaction to that. I mean, would any Texas Republican ever do the same thing? And I mean, are those donors going to be safe uh, uh, through this release? I think it's pretty shameful, and it's really low blow, low level of politics. They go after donors. Um, I mean, we all know those are public records if you know how to go dig mm -hmm. them up. Uh, but particularly what he did, of course, was to put it out on Twitter, to put it out on social media, 
with names of you know what their occupations were. Half right, of and were individual hired. businesses, right. And so, so but what is he inviting the people to do? Obviously, but to boycott or attack those businesses. And we've seen enough of this from the left across the country, attacking people in restaurants, everything else that they're doing. So I think it's shameful of, of uh, uh, Joaquin Castro to do this, uh, but it shows that he's having to resort to some kind of scare tactics or intimidation tactics to try to get some support. It's mm. another it desperate presidential campaign. Look, I think that uh, this was not helpful, what Joaquin Castro did. Um, as you point out, it was all public info. But isn't it a little hypocritical to worry about the danger that Castro may be causing these businesses by revealing you know, what, again, is public info, but to stay silent when the President of the United States um, uses language that is echoed by a mass murder in your own state, or even when he on Twitter celebrates the robbery of Elijah Cummings' house and singles out certain members of Congress um, in particular for harassment. Don't you have to speak out on all of those things? No, not at all. Those members of Congress are always subject to criticism. The, the cowardice of the left is to try to avoid criticism by t claiming every time that they're criticized it's somehow an action of racism. You know, and you're not even, to blame uh, Donald Trump for that is is absurd. Let's blame Elizabeth Warren then for the Dayton shootings because her. But sir, that's, you see, uh, you see in studies, you know, counties where Trump holds rallies see a 262 percent increase in hate crimes. Um, so don't you, you think the president should be? Hold on, don't you think the president should be a little more careful with his rhetoric too? So you think he should quit holding rallies? I don't know. You want to impose? No, some I kind think of he could change what he's saying and not call immigrants. You know, not say it's an infestation or an invasion. Language which is being picked up and used by people who take it too far. Well, what? Hey, what, what, will AOC talk, turn back her language? The kind of stuff she's doing, criticizing uh, Republicans on the left and the way she's attacking us. Um, where is all the outrage over this guy who shot Steve Scalise, who was a, a Bernie Brothers supporter? You know, I, this yeah, seems to be. I, a, I think this. I think this is one of those things where this could go endlessly in the mud. But Paul, the it, final thing I would do want to get you on. It causes that don't really apply. The sad thing and the tragic thing about these shooters, these are people who are troubled individuals, mentally ill individuals. We need to deal with the, the causes there. I don't care what the ideology they attach themselves to. They're oftentimes rootless. In, in many ways, products of, of very bad backgrounds. So we got to find ways. I, I, I terrorists who subscribe agree. to an ideology of hate. But yeah, I do want to yeah. ask you about this uh, new Texas poll that I know you all are interested in. Yeah. Um, look, it's early, right? We've got a long way to go till 2020. But you've got a new poll out that shows both Biden and Bernie Sanders, who I know is supposed to be horrible and terrifying because of socialism or whatever, beating Trump in your state. What do you think of that? Uh, I mean, that's a name ID thing to, to a large degree for both of those. And I don't, I can't imagine that Texas, the notion that Texas would vote for a socialist, um, because interestingly, Donald Trump would, in both those polls is beating both uh, Robert Francis O'Rourke, you call Beto, and, and uh -huh. Castro as well. So uh, it's it's it is early, as you said, and I'm confident Donald Trump will be able to carry Texas, given the, whatever left winger extreme left wing person that the uh, Democrats put up. I tend, given I tend to agree with you, Paul. Well, thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Paul. Thank you. Coming up, as we were discussing, we're going to dig more into that poll on who could potentially beat Trump in Texas. And the needle didn't move much after last week's Democratic debates. That's what New Hampshire voters think anyway. And the cash keeps rolling in for some Democratic candidates. Elizabeth Warren's campaign seems to be appealing, appealing to a large swath of donors. We're going to talk about the stories with Team Rising when Rising continues.